Hello and welcome to episode 99 of the FOMO cast. Oh, I didn't know that. I was going to ask you. One where away we were from at. the big 100. Oh, wow. I'm here with Andrew, uh, no Titus today. Uh, we're going to be having some fun today, doing a lot of spoiler stuff that we've missed out on, uh, giving people some time to digest on some Mandalorian and some Star Wars. I uh, imagine Rise podcast Skywalker. downloads were just non-existence in my absence <laughs> no I, that's opposite actually people love the titus only episodes you know what um one of my buddies did say he listened to the episode two episodes ago and said that titus was super engaged which he was titus was super engaged <laughs> the last one that i wasn't here uh it was funny hearing him give input <laughs> he was into it last time so um got a lot of stuff make sure go to all of our social media play- pages uh facebook.com slash fomo cast twitter fomo underscore cast fomo podcast on instagram and make sure you go to twitch we're live, live streaming on twitch and also make sure to go to our youtube channel i'm behind a little bit on the youtube channel i'm gonna upload those tonight uh the last week's episode and then i'll work on getting this one edited uh so if you're watching on twitch it'll be up there soon um uh, make sure you go to Pod Bros Network, podbros.com. I got I slapped on that one. I need to upload on there too. I've been su- I worked last weekend, so it was just super hectic. Um, and then hello to Timothy, Timothy Mendoza. Uh, haven't shouted you out in a long time. Love you, Tim. Tim always gives good gives good feedback, um, which he has some stuff we should talk about. Uh, like uh, we'll start off with it. Um, so have you heard anything about so the uh, guard uh Galaxy's Edge un- uh opened up the new ride in Disney World? Uh, I heard it was what it hit capacity by like right. eleven a.m. So Disneyland it was, was already well. Disneyland hasn't opened yet. De- Disneyland it opens up the July- January seventeenth. Disney World. Disney then, World. Yeah. Um, well, people were getting there early because it was it was a first come first serve. So they experimented. They have a new thingy they did for similar to what they did with Galaxy Edge opened. They had a thing that basically you could get into a group. So you're a group 39, and they'd send you a message, hey, um, time to come back to the area. You need to be back here at this time to come and ride the ride. So I heard it's phenomenal. It's one of it's, a, it's the first ride that it's trackless. So I have no idea how it works because apparently there's a drop. There's a video you can watch. It has the whole entire ride on it. Um, and you go through the resi- – you're basically a part of the resistance going through um, – uh, a first order ship. So um, I just thought it was super cool. Oh, is it, this is old, isn't it? No. The one that, it, it, where you're walking through and there's a bunch of massive sets. No, 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 no. No? No. It just opened up like two weeks ago. What was the previous ride? Just the one where you're in the That was ship? the Millennium Falcon one, yeah. No, this one must have had some kind of preview for like media like an early opening because i saw something a while back where people no got they, to, they've had people were recording the well no they have a thing where you can walk through where the troopers are standing that's a walkthrough part that's not the actual ride no so, no, no no i'll show you after because i'm sure this is an interesting to other people it, but so I'll, basically what they did they, they did this thing where they had guys walking through with hard hats basically and they were recording everything and you walk through and it looks like it's a hundred uh, soldiers standing there when you walk through and then you'll have spots where you walk through and you see all this different kinds of stuff and then they start like shooting at you and so well that one that one just opened up a couple weeks ago no, and, i saw this a long time ago they've been leaking not certain, a long, maybe a month yeah, this probably when it opened up was a month ago. Okay, I'll give you that. Um, We're gonna figure this out after. <laughs> but um, it it looks pretty awesome. They've have people are complaining because they go, well, I went for my my thing and it didn't. Uh, I didn't get to, do, to to go watch my stuff. And I'm like, come on, man, you're you're mad about not getting on the ride. And basically, because so people don't know, like Indiana Jones, that ride. I've heard if a hat falls off and goes on the track, guess what happens. It screws the track up everywhere that that hat gets drugged down because the 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 tracking is very sensitive. So basically, this ride's trackless. So you have something go haywire. So throw your hats in the air like it's graduation day. <laughs> but what I'm saying is it's it's a lot more stuff that can go wrong because they have Luigi's um uh the Luigi ride at California Adventure where you're on a you're a little car. And it does like a little dance, like it's a the cars spin around and do little things, and that's trackless too. It's I believe it's magnets under underneath, is what it is. So I mean, we'll see what happens. I know Tim uh, was talking about that. Um, I thought you were gonna say Tim tried it out. <laughs> no, that's seventeenth. He's going. He's going. Um, 
uh, February, I think he's going. So, so he'll have a little recap of that. We get um, him a guest spot for one hundo. We need to. Yeah. He needs to come on. <laughs> um, and then, so right now, we just watched uh, the Quiet Place, the part two. How did you feel about that trailer? <coughs> the trailer is cool. I, I think uh, because you know you come into it far after the invasion in the first one. This one, it looks like. I don't know if it's just a flashback or if they're going to keep flashing back, but you sh- they show the initial invasion, right. how it all started. I, I like I like getting that uh, that perspective of it. And I guess the rest of it just looks like it's just a continuation. It's the same thing. They got to avoid the monsters. It's almost like the they're, they're trying to find somewhere else to go cuz they're they're leaving what they're leaving their their old life behind. Um I will say that I mean, I don't, um, I pointed out, it seems like it's taking place pretty close to the last one because the baby's still a baby. So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how far in advance this is, this is altered or it's changed. Um, we, in the trailer, you do not see John Krasinski's character. So, um, he might be in flashbacks that's the thing i don't know maybe they just go back once or even at the beginning of the movie they just want to show you the initial invasion it could be uh it could be a pre-credit you know two minute thing and then we don't see I any mean, of the I, I mean the, the, you meet a guy in it that he basically is saying you know the people who are still alive aren't worth saving um and he sets a booby trap up in the trailer so this is not, this is not a spoiler it's just in the trailer and it does feel almost like um, how would you say it? If it feels like they're flashing back, maybe to make something make sense later on in the movie, maybe how you kill them, or you need to see something from the beginning to understand what we're gonna do. Exactly, something like that. I want there to be, and this goes for every, uh, I guess scary, not just scary movie, but where there's like a a creature that has to be defeated. Or I want there to be a possibility. There has to be. If it's just hopeless. There's no point to the movie if, if there's no... Right. Uh, there has to be some kind of goal. I think it was Annabelle. Uh, was, I don't watch very many horror movies. Right. But I something... I don't remember. Maybe I was at a friend's house or something. We watched Annabelle. And there was no... It was just hopeless. All, all she could do was get keep getting scared by this thing. Right. And it turned out there was no solution. There has right. to be some kind of solution. E- even if it Otherwise, goes, just give up. E- even if it goes bad because with I Am Legend... He figures out how to cure them, but he gives the girl back because he realizes they were in love and they were somewhat sentient, and he has a cure to f- cure them all. So, and, and in the end, he ends up, I believe he ends up dead in the end in that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. In, in the alternate ending, he ends up finding the oh, civilization. There's an, alternate. there's an alternate ending where he ends up giving the, the body back. And he ends up, um, I believe, finding a civilization that he hears on the radio. It's it's not interesting to watch a, a hopeless no uh, story. I mean, everyone like signs. That was that's a key example. Even if they find it on accident, they find out on accident how to kill these. That's a bad aliens. example because that's a horrible movie. <laughs> but it, it's a good example of how to do it, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah no, because I see what they you're they saying. go in a roundabout way. They're, there's no flashback, but they're 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 literally. Water is their enemy, and it does make sense. Like, okay, look, that guy's a genius. <laughs> hey, so I'm kind of like, okay, but it does make sense because why would you? Why would you want to be invested if all you know is that you're gonna sort of watch them for three hours hide and worry about this thing and not plan on trying to kill it? They were on a farm. Mm-hmm. You think they have some kind of irrigation system built in? Prob- in a farm? Um, I mean, in the Midwest, they have those ones that they do, like, manual. Like, well, they'll, they, they take the tubes that move the water around. You would around. think at some point, assuming these creatures are hidden, you, you hear them running through the corn, right. is it? Right. Throughout the movie. You would think at some point, an irrigation system would turn on and harm these aliens. I mean... Stupid movie. <laughs> I don't like science. I mean, yeah. Okay. I get it. I, I do. I do. Yeah. I mean, it didn't rain but, the whole but, time. But I, I do like, at least he gave, there was a way to defeat them. Right. I'll give him that. Right. There's that. I mean, every single, besides, like, the horror movies that aren't designed, like, they're there to scare you, that's different. Because it's not, 
you're not going in there expecting anything good to come of anything. When it's a suspenseful right, thriller, but there should still be some sense of how you can of right a possible closure. Right. Otherwise, you're just watching jump scares for an hour and a half. Which some people, that's what they're into, man. It's and I'm not saying that. I mean, that's yeah, that's what that movie is designed for. A lot of them are. But, I mean, you still got to put but something in there to, all, to close it. You also got to think, too, is the uh, if you go into a movie where you're wanting to be jump scared, what makes you feel calmer than the person having the ability to stop the bad thing that's happening? It's going to make you feel calm, well, it, which would make you get scared even more because they basically, oh, hey, if you do this, it kills the bad thing. And it doesn't even need to be presented right away. Well, it's like, was but... it um, Jaws Revenge? That's one of the ones that's like that. Which one's Revenge? Is that three? That's the one where they go to the water Is park. Dennis Quaid? Um, maybe? Dennis Quaid, right? Yes, the, yes. the water park, yeah. Yes. And they, go yeah. In, and they, they, think they, killed, they think they killed the mama, and no, 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 that was the baby. And, you know, so you were thinking, oh, they killed it. No, then the real mama comes. I'm glad you brought this movie up, because this is one of my favorite worst uh, effects Ever. Bro, if I, I was afraid of, <laughs> I was afraid to go to aquariums because of that movie. I, no, I'm terrified of sharks. But if uh, people can look this up, look up the Jaws 3. Um, the animatronic. Uh, it would be the, the killing scene. It's when, right. they, it's when they kill the shark. Right. So they're in an underwater control room. Right. There's a huge glass window. Mm -hmm. Like in well, how many shark movies? Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea. Well, anyway. So the shark is <laughs> it's slowly swimming towards this, uh, right at them, right at this huge glass window. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not moving. It doesn't move. So it's, it's dead still. It just, it, I don't yeah. think sharks swim like that, but it's, it's just dead still floating. And it hits the glass with its nose. There's a good two-second pause where nothing happens. You just see glass, like, fracture. And then it, it starts... pauses, and then it shatters, and water rushes in. It's horrible. Look up the Jaws three. I don't know shark kill scene. You can find it. Online. it it's it's very funny. Well, I've heard a lot uh, about uh, Jaws, especially like with the first original one about how the original animatronic sank or whatever it did. It wasn't. They built this huge animatronic shark and it didn't work out, kind of thing. But but that's one of the things. You go into you, 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 what do you expect in a Jaws movie? You expect to see sharks, and you expect them to figure out a way to kill them. And in that one, especially, I'll never forget if they kill the one shark. Same thing with that one with um, uh, the new one that just came out, the Meg. Same thing. Yeah. They kill the smaller one. The bigger one comes after them. And so even if it's just the smallest sign of hope, you know, like you said, it does give you something to be vested into it and. I mean, I feel like a lot of these movies, there was a time period, I think it was like right after Blair Witch, everything was about, oh, you got to be jump scared, and you have to have twists like M. Night Shyamalan, it has to be something crazy like that, and I just don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think that that's the, that's, that's not the way it's supposed to be anymore, I think it's supposed to be more fun now. There's just, there's nothing more boring than an undefeatable villain in a movie. Exactly. Exactly. Which, um, that's why I'm super stoked for the new James Bond. Because um, there's so many rumors out there, like they're saying that this the show takes place like the trailer takes place over like two different timelines. I haven't heard much about it. Who's the villain in it? Uh, Remy Malik. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So he's the bad guy in it. Freddie Mercury. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they were saying like some of this stuff doesn't add up. They look, they're looking at certain things from certain scenes and they go that doesn't add up. Like it can't even it can't even be the same time, so they think there's flashbacks. So I'm super excited for for that movie. Um, I'm also excited. So they announced t today there was like a, a website that they're kind of accurate, kind of not. They're like a Star Wars fan site, so they're one of those ones that whenever a rumor pops up, it could they could they could misconstrue it completely because it could be hey look someone from Lucas Arts was talking about making this character. It could be for a comic, could be a video game, could be anything. They're just putting everything they can get their hands on. Right. Out there. Well, then all of a sudden, comicbooks.com, all these different websites started posting that. Um, apparently, the new Star Wars movies, which are set to start debuting in 2021 or 2022, I can't remember okay. which year, um, that they're going to be taking place 400 years before the Skywalker saga during the High Republic. So... I don't, I've never heard of the High Republic. I'm not caught up on any of that reading stuff for 
a lot of the book stuff. I need to get back into it. I used to read a lot of the comics about Jedi's, but um, so four hundred years before the Skywalker saga, which to me means that means Yoda can be alive in the this yeah, one. Yeah, because he's what nine hundred years old when he dies. Is that what they say? Eight something. I think nine hundred when he dies, though. Is he nine hundred? Yeah, I think and so. And then, because because even I think even Chewie technically they say that be he's eight hundred in one of the movies, and uh-huh. then they calculate that he would have been nine hundred something okay. when he died. And then so Chewie's like four. I think they lived like four fifty, four eighty five, something like that. I don't Wookies. know about him. That would be cool to have a uh, the some connection of having Yoda who can stretch across such a long time period. Right. Have some kind of connection. Which uh, to the to these movies, which would be would be kind of cool, also. But they said that I mean, there there's there, everything supposedly is going to have an arc cross. So the Mandalorian's supposed to be getting a Skywalker saga character, which a lot of people are, are thinking is going to be uh, Maz Kanata. Um, so we'll see if that's who's, who's going to be. Is that? <laughs> no, we'll get into it at the end of the episode. Um. <laughs> But there's a lot of possibilities for this new series because they said it's not going to be um, a trilogy. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be Marvel esque. It's going to have its own universe. Yeah, I heard they're done with trilogies. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Which for me, I, th- I think like uh, one person pointed out something cr- pretty awesome that I thought I thought was pretty awesome. We'll talk about it a little bit. So there might be some spoilers here for Star Wars, but not nothing. We're just going to talk about cinematic way. So on the the MCU versus the Star Wars, the big thing people have noticed is with the MCU, do you feel like the directors have their own, like they can do what they want, right? And the MCU, for the most part. To, to a point. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, same thing with Star Wars, but it feels like the Star Wars people, they lose their creativity because they don't want to do any damage to the Star Wars image. Yeah, Whereas yeah. with the MCU, Taika Waititi, did, he did um, Star uh, Thor Ragnarok. Ragnarok was its own thing. And it was its own like whole new world, but it yeah. was still tied everything in. And it's still yeah. and so I feel like um, you'll even see that with The Mandalorian. He's He directed the last episode of The Mandalorian. And you, like, there's a th- you, can, you can feel it's a different director, but it still connects everything together. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens. I hope they give people a little more free range. Um, apparently, um, uh, so uh, Connor from Con Con's Cantina. Hello, Connor. Um, he they mentioned on their podcast. Um, I think it was their podcast, or it was. I think it was his. Yeah, um, that Bob Geiger's book. There's a whole chapter called Star Wars, and it's basically how they knew when they bought Star Wars from George Lucas, they were not going to use any of his ideas because he had like a bunch of stuff laid out for a new trilogy. So I want to know what that is. There's also a thing now saying they want the JJ Abrams cut because, um, uh, what's his Dominic Monahan? Is that his name? Who? Um, the guy that was from the lost and the Hobbit. He was in the new, uh, rise of Skywalker movie. Um, he was saying that there's a bunch of footage that got cut. Like there was a, apparently there's a whole thing. Well, they reshot a lot of stuff too. Well, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it in spoilers because part of it's a spoiler. You're, we'll talk you're about. not allowed to do what you want in Star Wars because it belongs to the fans, <laughs> and, and you have to so reshoot everything for, that people for don't me. Like. So Connor has watched it. He said he watched it I think two times, and he's going to watch it a third. For me personally, what it was is there was there was flaws in the movie that I could see. I still enjoyed the movie. I still enjoyed the movie. But there was flaws, and there's going to be flaws when you're buying a lot of stuff back. That's what happens. It's going to happen. But we'll get to it. Yeah, I digress. Yeah. We'll get to it later. <laughs> um, well, it's going to get pretty quick because we don't have too much to talk about because there was we, this is pretty quick turnaround. But um, Clone Wars season seven is coming February seventeenth, so I'm going to be spending all of tonight binge watching the rest of season two, so I can do all of season three next week, season four the week after that. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I have a lot to do. Um, <laughs> Busy guy. Yeah. So um, we'll start. We'll let's, let's go into our spoilers section. We're gonna do all spoilers because we've um, we've missed Andrew. And we'll mind you. So the first spoiler is um, well. Before we do that, let's talk about the documentaries you watched. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, just yeah, so yeah. you know, you don't even know the excitement I could feel in Titus and Andrew's text voices when we found out that um, who let the dog out? That documentary <laughs> was available to buy on on uh, most streaming platforms. So, but 
Andrew went into this jaded because. Well, uh, wait, are we starting with the score one? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I came across, if anyone's into film scoring, the making the music for movies, not soundtrack, but, you know, the orchestral music that you hear in the background right. of a movie. John williams John Williams is a big one. Uh, Hans Zimmer is real popular. Mm. Uh, Howard Shore. Well, anyway, uh, it, it had a lot of those guys. Uh, James Horner, who died a few years ago, mm-hmm. uh, he did Titanic. Okay. A lot of the James Cameron ones. Um, it's interviews with all these guys, uh, talk about their process, the music behind some of those iconic film scores. Right. And I, I, I love film scoring. And, and I, I mean, a lot of it has to deal, too, with... I know that Star Wars is really cool about... Um, they incorporate so much of what's actually going on into the music itself. So when you watch Star Wars and there's a lightsaber battle, people, people, the du- duel of the fates is the most duel popular fates, one yeah. because it, it brings you in. It sucks you into that scene because the beats and everything is hitting at the right points. And it's, it's very, um, you probably wouldn't even recognize it until you sat there and thought about it. So it, for me, I it's so I much appreciate more brilliant it than you even think. Because how many movies do you watch where it's like a jo- mostly mostly Ryan Reynolds movies where there's an action scene happening and all of a sudden he's in an elevator and you can hear the music playing on the elevator music and then it comes out and it goes back into the orchestral type of type of the you know the score hits you and yeah, that's yeah. important. That's why I like Black Panther people think it's revolutionary because the, the way they used uh you know a hip hop or rap music yeah it was. Really, really phenomenal because it took the idea of orchestral stuff, but also put it into modern, and nobody had done it yet, really, with that type of stuff. That uh, that duel of the fates, too. Um, I think the with the chorus, uh, the choir is singing in. I think it's not Latin. I can't remember the language. If you look it up, though, the, the what they're singing mm-hmm. relates to what's going on. Okay, too. yeah, that's pretty awesome. Uh, there, you, you can find a video on YouTube of a. Uh, if you probably look up John Williams' Duel of the Fates, you mm-hmm. can find him talking it over with George Lucas, and they do the actual scoring session where he's conducting the orchestra, and uh, you can see the choir singing it, and you've heard the song before, but to see that sound come out of their mouths right. is so crazy. You can find that on YouTube. Okay. Look up Duel of the Fates, John Williams. That's a very cool video. Okay. So I, I, I love film scoring, but even if you don't, I think it's really fun to watch. It's called score, people, exclamation point. People really don't know what all that goes into it. Yeah, it's not something you really think about. And they come in so late, the movie's done, it's edited, right. it's it's in its final stages. Then the composer comes in and they sit down with the director and producers and they uh, watch the movie together, mm-hmm. talk about just where to put music, where not to put music, right. what kind of music they want. Um, for me, the whole thing was amazing, but just alone, James Cameron has a, a little tiny, uh, snippet towards the credits where he, he talks about James Horner, who, uh, he died in a plane crash, I think 2015, 2016, he oh, was wow. a pilot, so he died, uh, he crashed his plane somewhere near Santa Barbara. Oh, I, and, it, uh, was, it was a solo, a solo crash, yeah, yeah, correct? Yeah, he was by himself. And, and it was, uh, it wasn't like, I'm trying to remember, I think I remember that one, it wasn't like, uh... Oh, heavily! It wasn't a, like a populated area. It was like trees, no, wasn't it? Or it mountains? Was in a forest outside yeah. of uh, outside Santa Barbara. Yeah. Uh, but he did Titanic, Avatar, um, A Beautiful Mind. Okay. Uh, he's got some iconic. Uh, he did all the. He worked with Ron Howard a lot, so like Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons. Okay. Uh, and James Cameron just has a little story about him uh, writing the music and playing music for him. Uh, and actually played it himself when uh, James Horner uh, told him, uh, you know, I know the best pianist in the world, and I'll I'll get him for you to play this song. And James Cameron was like, No, I, you play it just like that. Play it for me. And, and so that's him playing on the movie. You can find cool stuff about him and uh, the story with him and Celine Dion, and mm-hmm. and how many obstacles that iconic My Heart Will Go On, mm-hmm. uh, how it almost never happened. Celine didn't want to sing it. James Cameron didn't want a song. He wanted music. He wanted a score. He didn't want a song in his movie at all. And all these uh, hoops they jumped through, that song was so close to not happening. And, and that's because it's iconic and, now. To be the most iconic uh, movie song, it's the best-selling orchestral soundtrack. Um, 
yeah, of all time. I mean, name name another movie that when you think of you you know the the song out of it. Such a synergistic relationship. It's not a, not a musical. So if you're you're saying yeah, it's not yeah. a musical because musicals don't count, but like an actual movie. I mean, I'm trying to. I don't know any other one where the movie built up the song, the song built up the movie. They both uh-uh. won Oscars, right? I don't. I yeah. I don't. I don't. I can't think of anything besides orchestral stuff from Star Wars. Because that's just kind of yeah, John but none Williams. Yeah, those are given. songs you'd hear on no, the radio. No, yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's, yeah. that's pretty. That's yeah, pretty you can amazing. You find that on YouTube too. There's interviews okay. with him and Celine Dion and uh, and, and her. her where did you watch Score and, at? Score. Where did I find it? Maybe on bootleg. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. it's Score. With exclamation, an exclamation point. point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so after that, you watched so the that, Who Let the Dog Out documentary. <laughs> after enjoying that so much, I immediately went to watch the Who Let the Dogs Out, uh, which I've been waiting for for months, just because I heard from people who saw it at festivals, everyone said they really liked it. Mm-hmm. And it was good. It's interesting. It's short. It's only about an hour. Okay. It, it was just interesting to hear uh, how far back it goes. Because it goes to the early 90s, isn't it? Oh, they went back even further than that. Really? And that's what kind of gets you is that they go back and they go back and you find someone, an earlier recording of that that popular chorus, and you get tired of hearing this song by the end of the documentary. <laughs> and and you think, oh, there's no way there's any more. And he goes back further, and it's pretty crazy how far back it actually goes and where they end up at, too. See, I, I really wanted to watch it because... I have heard like there was like lots of tension between people on it when it came out. A lot of lawsuits, copyright, well, uh, and a also lot of trials. They also said that the the guys even said we don't want this to be what we're known for because someone I think someone even told them this is going to be a, a hit. Yeah, the Baja Men. Yeah, were, uh, they're actually <laughs> they're they're a very little part of it. They start with them because mm-hmm. that's that's where it got most popular. I think right. at least over here. And uh, yeah, one of the one of the guys says, um, you know, we didn't really want anything to do with it. Yeah. I don't think they fought for it either. But it goes so much further than them. That's pretty awesome. There's a lot of documentaries out there now, and it's hard to find one that's just kind of like I like. The, I used to like watching documentaries that there wasn't much. Like, there, I'm not saying like risk or reward but they were just kind of there like i know there's a documentary yeah. about some movie where they use the local uh natives to film i can't remember what it is but there it's some famous director that he used like locals and there's all these different stuff that, that i've heard that they've used and like I, I like ones like that like especially movie ones or music ones because people don't realize like everyone's like oh you know look up look up who writes your favorite song because usually if you find and you look that person up and they're under a certain age, they're going to be a singer sooner or later. They're going to be out there. Because every single – we went to go watch Kenny Chesney. Um, he had the group Old Dominion with him. Well, the lead guys from Old Dominion wrote his hottest song that he had on his current album. Yeah. So it's kind of like, um, you know, the only song that of recent memory that I've seen – I don't know if you watch this. People Google um, – uh, the song is called um, "The Father, the, the the Father, My Son, and the Holy Ghost." It's a country song, and it's um, oh, what's his name? I'll look it up right now, just because it's, it's really important. So, what happens with a lot of songs um, is basically someone writes it, and then all of a sudden, someone's like, "Hey, listen to this," and they go, "Ah, oh, you know what? These lyrics sounds like so and so. Why don't you take it over to them?" Kind of thing, because a lot of guys share different stuff so it was craig morgan so craig morgan's son died and um he wrote this song himself about his son like it's about basically him getting over his adult son dying and you don't get that very often anymore it's like um blake shelton wrote the song about his brother dying and miranda lambert is the one that sang it so you don't really get that kind of you know so that's why I do like watching stuff about songs because you, you you learn the origin or like a lot of times it's like, no, like this song was written like in the 40s. And yeah. then like um, I didn't realize how many of the Beach Boy songs were like early on 40-ish songs or whatever or someone else sang it and then all of a sudden they made it popular. Elvis has a pretty dark history of For, where right. his music really came from right not not all of it maybe but there's yeah there's a, a significant of portion of it that's stolen from something or another yeah 
Um, so it's it's kind of um, I like documentaries about stuff like that because I remember that behind the music was the funnest thing to watch as a kid on on VH1. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you're kind of like sitting there and you're like. Guys are saying, "Oh, you know who? That's that's the I listen to a radio uh, a radio show, well, they're a podcast now, East Coast Tony Kornheiser show, and they have a thing called Old Guy Radio. And Old Guy Radio starts off by playing an old song, and he usually knows the name and everything, and they'll do little tidbits and facts about it, about how." You know, they joke a lot about the Beatles, how someone had a dream or they were on LSD, and then the first thing they did was they woke up, they wrote the song in 10 minutes, and bam, you had a hit. And I don't think that happens anymore now because, like, um, big one, a new song by Justin Bieber. It's called Yummy. <laughs> and um, I, will, I follow the uh, Snapchat has the uh, Barstool Chick, uh, Chick Chat, I think it's called, where it's the two of the girls from Barstool Sports, and they talk about – um, stuff when they said they go this is legitimately he made this song for tiktok he made it so that it could be used as a tiktok thing to make the song go viral and that's the thing everything goes into everything now is super like coordinated and calculated it's not unique it's not anything but yeah. for that specific instance so that's why i do appreciate like my big thing is um like when lord came out um she she had whatever her number uh, Royals was the top one. Yeah, yeah. And I go, tennis courts is going to be the second one. And my wife's like, what? I go, yeah, tennis courts is going to be the second one that comes out. That's going to be a hit. I go, you can just feel it. it's a different type of song. And that's, that's how the times were at that time. They'd have a popular one that had a good beat. Then if you person had a, one that had a different kind of beat, bam, Taylor Swift, every time she has a hit song, guess what it is. It's completely different from the last one. It's never the same kind of beat. It's, it's not. It always goes upbeat or dark, upbeat or dark. It's kind of fluctuates. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, man. That's why I like those documentaries. So, if you have the opportunity to, I'm trying to try and watch the Who Let the Dogs Out one soon because uh, I after I watched that Fire Festival one, now whenever I see different that things, really like, that, that was a really good one. Exactly. So, um, so we have that. So. Now we'll get into spoilers. We're going to start off with The Mandalorian because Andrew hasn't been here. And since it is over and people have had time to sit on it, um, I've rewatched the last episode uh, three times now. <laughs> um, because, um, so spoiler for everything in Mandalorian, a little bit of Rise of Skywalker is going to be after that. But we might touch on it a little bit because of the connection. Um, so we talked in text and you think that the force healing was the thing that they used to connect the movie now i'm convinced it is okay because well we're gonna have to consider okay so rise of skywalker spoilers too right yes yes uh, yes, yes. all right um <laughs> so there wasn't much point to her using the force healing what twice in the movie right once on the worm and then again once on, on kylo yeah yeah and and it, it kind of felt like like she was doing it and I, I almost thought she was going to stop and look at the camera and go, hey, you guys remember this from The Mandalorian, right? I, and that's what it felt like. I feel like it has more implications on The Mandalorian than The Mandalorian did on Rise of Skywalker. Because, you know, here we're going to go, it's Skywalker spoilers, um, Ben Solo dies because he gave his life force to her to, to heal her. So does that mean when you force heal someone, depending on their damage to them, that pulls life force from you? I would think so because Yoda always seems, baby Yoda always seems to fall asleep after he does it. Right, right? but he doesn't, but does that mean, does it regenerate? I think it depends how much, you know, right. I mean, it must, right? I hope so. I guess it depends. See, it's stupid. I'm not, I, it makes more Star sense. Star Wars fans it, are gonna it makes lose more, it on me. But it makes more sense though in the Mandalorian because you, it's a it's something that doesn't know how to control its power. You've learned that with Baby Yoda, because in the Mandalorian he force chokes Cara Dune because he thinks that she's hurting the Mando, and so basically this little thing that has no training in Jedi anything, no training in the Force, is doing things off instinct only. You know what I mean? Well, I think he doesn't if, understand what she's doing. He knows what he's doing, I think. Who? Baby Yoda by choking her? No, 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 protecting? no, 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 no. He knows, no, he knows that, but he doesn't know the extent of what his power can do. So when he sees someone hurt, he's like, I need to fix them. It's not like in Rise of Skywalker where it's like, oh, I think I can do this. When did she learn how to do this? Exactly. And this is the only reason they did the whole... 
uh, they put it in the Mandalorian and released it first. Is that it's just so people wouldn't say, "Hey, where did this come from?" I will. I will. So, although people are still saying, "Hey, where did this come from?" I will say with this. Uh, shout out to Con Con, Con Con's Cantina, Connor. Um, I still I always call him Chubbs. Still, Grief Car got call him Chubbs. He's gonna be Chubbs me for the rest of my life. So you know Chubbs from uh, Happy, Happy Gilmore. Gilmore yeah. So I call him Chubbs. Dude, he, he was on one that last episode. Hey, baby, do the magic hand thingy, and the baby, and the baby Yoda's all ee, like this, bro. What is that? that? That was amazing. Here's the thing: the Mandalorian last episode was. I mean, I love the fact that they they put on Jason Sudeikis' uh, w- Wikipedia that he punched Baby Yoda. That's freaking <laughs> hilarious. And that's the kind that felt very original trilogy comedy esque. You know what I mean? Like the goofy stormtroopers. Yes, uh, yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't forced. It was legitimately their bad shooting was pretty forced. Well, was... when when IG Eleven's walking up, that was pretty forced. But I did like the fact though that he basically they didn't blame the shooting on the trooper. They blamed the shooting on the person because he's sitting there with a the gun, shaking it like this, <laughs> like what's wrong with my gun? So he's genuinely bad. Um, how did you feel about the series as a whole? I have I have a theory. As, My... as a whole, <laughs> you you literally could have watched episode one and episode eight, and you would have all the story you need. Um, True. That doesn't mean cool things didn't happen in between, but right. but like you said, it was all um, like one off stories. It was X Files esque, right? Well, I don't remember X Files, but well, see, <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying. X Files yeah, used yeah. to do standalone. Yeah. It was always what is I think it was monster and then like alien yeah, monster. It's not and alien. that it would take away, but it was almost like we're taking a break from the main. St- what I right, think it right, is, is right. they wrote a story, which is he found the baby and now he's protecting it because the empire obviously wants it for something, <clears throat> and that's pretty much all we know so far. Right, and and that's not a long story to stretch into eight episodes. No. so that you so you have to put other stuff in there, which is okay. I'm fine with I, that. I I did appreciate the fact that you. You did. You didn't. the The end episode, the episode eight, tied up so much stuff without being felt. Didn't feel forced. You know what I mean? And they used a way to reveal the backstory of all those people there by having someone come in in uh, Moff Gideon, yeah. who knew their background because of who he was. So, I really appreciated that because it wasn't like. You know, he explains the Mando. Well, I can't remember what his name is. I, I'm still just gonna call oh, him Mando. It's something wild. I forgot. Di, it's like Din Din Din, Din yeah, Dajin or something like that. Whatever. Yeah. Well, the thing was is, though is they use the idea of he has access to all the archives because of his position. So that's how he knows who I am. The only person that would know that my real name would be them because no one knows my real name. So I liked how they did that. I really appreciated. Um, uh, the the way that they the IG eleven thing was phenomenal. That whole fight scene I was in the so end. I'm so glad he came back. I don't know if I said this on the podcast. I know I said it to you guys. IG eleven was one of my favorite parts of the show in the beginning. His whole fight scene was so cool in episode one. Mm-hmm. And then they kill him, and I, so I was I was sad. A, a lot of people have. So a prob- it was cool to see it, him come back. Right. Well, and a lot, I wanted him to come back. A lot of people have problems with the last episode and the fact that um, Cara Dune has like five thermal grenades on her so why can't they just throw them out there also it's a whole platoon but they're horrible shots and you guys have destroyed them this whole time okay i get it um i do like the introduction of the bacta uh spray that was really cool oh, yeah, yeah. that was pretty awesome that's um, been used before and um not like that no but uh who used i know finn's got it in his suit in one of the movies well in darth vader darth that's what vader he, uses it yeah and then luke luke's in the back to tank when he comes back from when he's on Hoth, too, yeah. when he's on Hoth, he puts him in there. So, um, I really liked that. Um, a lot of people had an interesting theory about how IG Eleven doesn't really believe that he's not a living being. Being he's just saying that so that he can pull off Mando's helmet to to treat him. Because he said no living beings have seen my f- face since I was a kid. And he goes, I'm not a living being, and he pulls his helmet off. Well, that was just cheesy. I thought that was just bad writing. <coughs> <laughs> because it's it's they almost set it up like it was a surprise. Like, why would you say that to a droid? Obviously, he's not a living being when he said One it. One of my favorite things is is uh, how horrible um, Pedro Pascual looks underneath that helmet. 
Um, that's exactly how you would think you would look for some dude that never takes off the helmet. Well, he looks exactly like him. It was almost like it was. But, but it's mean, like he's lifting it up so slowly, and and you're like, we're finally gonna see him. We're gonna finally gonna see him, and then you see him, and you're like. Oh, it's just Pedro Pascal. <laughs> but the <laughs> sweat, exactly the like sweat, him. and his messy hair, it makes sense. Um, if you haven't looked it up yet, you guys need to look up when Pedro Pascal found out that they wanted him to do the movie. Um, apparently, John Favreau asked him to come in, and he's like, "Oh, I'm so excited! I'm gonna be on the Star Wars universe." And he's like, all stoked, and he's like, "Who, who am I gonna play? You know, which, which, what side character am I?" And they're like, "No, you're the Mando." And he, I get, he almost started crying talking about it because he was just like, "Oh my god." You know, he goes, I grew up, I was born, I think he said he was born in 77. So it's kind of like he grew up with oh, Star man. Wars, you know, so it was kind of like, that was kind of cool. And um, I did like the whole course of the story. Um, the one thing I say that I feel personally was negative was the amount of people that kind of got away or they left for another season. Because it feels like it's going to be one of those, hey, Mando, you owe me this, or hey, you killed so-and-so, or... Because in reality, if if it was a, a good, if it was perfect ending, um, Moff Gideon would still survive, but there'd be no backing, so it'd be almost like a bounty hunter chasing him. But he wouldn't know because everything's supposed to be hunky dory, so no people were hiding or no people were ran away that he tried to kill. He killed everyone that's bad, and he's just trying to find Yoda's uh, home we planet. We still don't know who picked up uh, in the shooter episode. Correct. We don't know who that Which was. Which somebody may have screwed up. Um, if you guys don't want to know who it potentially it is, do not listen. Uh, whatever. Supposedly, it's it's um a Death Watch person. Um, because Death Death Watch. Yeah, Death Watch. Death Watch is just the um the, the Mandalorians who um are who saved him when he was a kid. Oh, okay. And that's why they're saying this is the kind of cool thing. When you look at the backstory, all of this I learned from Kong Khan's Cantina. And I talked to Connor personally on the phone. I was like, dude, is this what this could be? So if you notice, the blacksmith talks about how they fought the Jedi. The only Mandalorians that fought the Jedi were Death Watch because they were pro war. They wanted to fight for their planet. So the the thinking thinking is, is that this person, <coughs> I haven't finished Clone Wars yet, so I haven't seen it yet, but apparently there's a person who had the dark saber. She was like the queen of of Death Watch, and that's who they think the armorer is. Oh, okay. Which I did really appreciate them showing how Mandalorians are so awesome. The fact that she beat up all those stormtroopers just using her armory stuff, not using a weapon, a real weapon at all. That was freaking awesome did you hear that uh pedro pascal wasn't there at all for uh i think it was episode four yeah the one that bryce dallas howard yeah she said she didn't work with him at all nope because they, they they dubbed over everything it yeah. was it's uh who was in the suit it's someone famous um oh, i don't know or the son of someone famous i need to find this he's now. a side person basically then he did he, then they said they has to his stand ins a bunch of the time so it makes sense yeah i think that's part of the utility of the because well, sean, sean gunn does a bunch of that sean gunn who is james gunn's brother um he plays rocket he's the motion capture for rocket raccoon on uh guardians of the galaxy and he also plays craglin he's one of the ravagers and so it's you know I think it's commonplace to do that because it's kind of a body, but I will say the Mandalorian finished on a high note for me. I'm excited for season two, which drops this year in probably September October. Um, I'm also excited for that series for the simple fact that we got so many people who are still, you know, alive, and who can be that Skywalker person that's going to come into the the series? I mean, it could be someone small, but. Oh, excuse me. Oh, and so you know how we find out to the person who picked up uh, uh, the assassin, whatever her name was, yeah, because Funko Pop leaked it on accident. Oh, really? <laughs> they put out a Funko Pop that's basically a bounty hunter that we haven't seen yet wearing a cape, and it's not Boba Fett. It's a, a different person that's I think believe part of Death Watch. So um, we'll see. I, I'm. It, it's going to be tough waiting. Um, have you heard about the, the funny stories, people faking, when they're faking, they're canceling their Disney Plus account, and they're like, why are you canceling? It says Mandalorian finished, and it says they put this is the way <laughs> on the end of it. That, by the way, I, I, 
that line is so cheesy. I hate it. So I think the, it's terrible. The rumor is this would fit in with the Death Watch thing is because they're whatever group they are, that's kind of their thing is this is the way is they created a new creed for the Mandalorians that they didn't want to, they didn't agree with and they were wanted to split off kind of thing. Right, but to say it every <laughs> it's just it's so cheesy. It's terrible. Uh, that's John Wayne's grandson. Really? Playing him, yeah. That's pretty that's, awesome. That's who it was. Brendan Wayne. How old is he? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Brendan Wayne is his name. Brendan Wayne. Uh, 72, so 47. Four, wow. So he's older than Pedro Pascual. That's kind of crazy. Um, so now we'll go to the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> So how did you how did you feel about it overall? T- uh, T- Titus, honestly, overall. I love Titus and all, but Titus doesn't care. <laughs> Titus doesn't care about Star Wars. How was your guys' uh, date to the? So the funniest part was in the very end of the movie. Did he tell you what he did to me in the very end of the movie? I don't think so. So we're sitting there. Do I want to know? No, it's Remember, funny. It's really podcast. funny. We're sitting there, and so the ending happens, and he leans over and goes, "Great." Now she's committing identity theft. And I was just like, oh my God, Titus, right on the end of it. And I'm just like, this is pretty funny. He he doesn't know the, the story behind everything. He's not into that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I think he, he it was just a movie. So if you're not into it, like for me personally, like the big one. So uh, Wedge Antilles, who was in the new movie. Who's that? Wedge Antilles. He was one of the. He was. He was started in A New Hope. He's one of the X-wing pilots. Oh, and he yeah, came yeah. in with with uh, with Lando, Lando and yeah. Chewie. He raised Snap Wexley, the dude that was from Heroes that got blown up before they got there. So it's like you guys screwed up an opportunity to have them have a moment when they're flying through space. That made me mad because Snap Wexley's gone through a lot. One thing that they don't tell anyone that kind of makes me mad. Finn shouldn't have been the one that had the Force sensitivity because Poe grew up with the Force sensitive tree. Luke Skywalker gave his parents a tr- a seed to plant that's a Force sensitive tree, so he grew up with the Force. So there's a lot of missteps. That this this is the dumb part. The there's book, a lot of dumb parts. They put a book out before uh, the Force Awakens came out that kind of gave you a back backstory on all three main characters, and they mentioned this in the book. So why are you not building off the fact that Poe should have some source a force sensitivity? You know what I mean? They they push that he's more of just about being a resistance pilot. No, the dude got more stuff going on. So I digress. Also, Kevin Smith was in the movie. Where was he? He was on um, that uh, the planet where um, they're working on C three PO. He's talking to one of the big dudes. I guess he's got like a trench coat on or something like that. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of wild stuff in this movie. <laughs> Not in, like, a Star Wars universe wild way, just, um... I, okay, overall, let me get this out of the way. Overall, it was just like the other two. I heard every, a lot of people have said this is their least favorite of the three, but mm. to me, it was... I couldn't even tell you the difference between, what, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker. They're all the same movie to me. Um... But this one did have a lot of crazy stuff. So do we know that Finn is Force-sensitive? Yeah, that's what they're hinting From at. From what? Um, basically because... When I know J.J. He... Abrams said that's what he was going to tell her, so which is a crazy thing when, also. Well, because so they never have really addressed, because at the end of Force Awakens, he's unconscious, right? So what they're saying is, is that when he held the lightsaber, he felt a draw to the Force. And they've already said... George Lucas has said, my idea behind the Force is not that it's specific bloodlines and whatnot. It's that everyone has... Midichlorians. <laughs> everyone has the Force in them. It's all about it's who knows how to use it. Okay. Correct. So basically, they say that Finn is. And I would have wished they would have explored that more with the other people who um, uh, were on that island that were all former... Um, first order soldiers, and what? So th- another thing they left out of the movie that's huge. Um, apparently, there's this big part about. I guess Lando mentions it. It's, it's very, very minimal. But I guess in the comics, after the Empire fell, and because Jakku was the actual last battle, so there were still people going around. 
Well, they said that when the First Order started getting established, the first thing they did was they went and kidnapped as many of the kids of um, former rebel leaders. So he thinks that girl is his daughter. He is not sure because his daughter got kidnapped when she was little, apparently. So there, everyone's like, I swear there's going to be a Lando thing on Disney Plus or something. There's going to be something. Um, but it felt like so there were so many loose ends that they just were like, whoop, tied it up, whoop, tied it up. And they kept hinting at stuff and it leaking kinda stuff. It was kind of crazy that, that he didn't, that they didn't make some kind of like, that they were father-daughter. Because otherwise it's just these two... Uh, strangers trying to help each other fight. Same race right. uh, characters in, in this universe, where there's not many, uh, just happen to get together and say, hey, let's hang out and figure out where you're from. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. The, 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 Unless they were father-daughter. That's the only way the it would The biggest sense. problem I had, so one thing I didn't talk about, they're, they're, look, they're working on a, um, a sequel to the Rebels cartoon, um, and apparently I haven't watched it yet, but uh, Ahsoka Tano is in it. And she is one of the voices that you hear talking to Ray, and everyone's like, "What? She's dead? We didn't know she was dead." And so Dave Filoni, creator of Clone Wars, you don't have to be dead to yes, the what she was doing. Well, no, because her and Kylo can talk back and forth. That but... wasn't that was uh, because of so. There's different types of force talking. No, that was because of Palpatine did that. <sighs> he created Snoke, and Snoke did the thing where he opened up a connection between them. It wasn't. It was artificial. So they said there's a dyad. It's, but it's, they were still able to do it. Right. Because it was some sort of dyad. They called it a dyad in the force. That basically they, they, they've heard in the past that people with basically certain levels of the force are able to connect on a certain level. The thing is, though, is when she was talking, when she asked, those are force ghosts that were talking to her. And that's what it was. But then Dave Filoni, I, I don't know what happened with these people when they were talking about making shows. They were like flipping each other off, going, "No, no, no, this ain't gonna how it's gonna happen." Because even Ryan Johnson hasn't said nothing about it really yet. But her his thing with Rose Rose Tico, which I can't remember what her real name is now, is in real life. Um, but she w- had a huge part in being an awesome. She was the one that saved po- uh, Finn in the end. Yeah, the and then they left her on babysitting duty for this movie. <laughs> well, and so I found out later that apparently there was a bunch of scenes that she filmed that were supposed to be CGI'd with Princess Leia, but it just didn't work out because the technology is not to that point where they can do that. So I think that's why she hasn't really talked out too much about it. I don't know. Um, but Dave Filoni tweeted out a thing of ah- Ahsoka Tenno talking to Gandalf and him saying, people thought I was dead too. So I'm like, oh my god, he is buying it back right now. Because that's one of the that's the one character that when I've looked up anything, everyone's like, we want to know what happened to her. We want to know how it happened to her. <coughs> and stupid J.J. Uh, Abrams goes, you'll have to look real closely to see if, you, if she's in the movie. And I'm like, why is dude doing this? <laughs> he flat out said before the movie started, before they, they started doing anything, that he's horrible at wrapping movies up. Wrapping or series or whatever up. And I'm like, what? Why would you do that? <laughs> Apparently, the Palpatine thing is completely new. It was not in the original director's plans. It was legitimately added later on. And apparently, here's the craziest part. There's a whole part that we don't hear that was in Fortnite. The game Fortnite had a huge portion of it. And Palpatine talking, right? Yep. Yeah. They did a huge thing. Basically, you understand a lot more. They said there was a whole sequence where you found out how Palpatine survived and what Palpatine's been doing. But they cut that from the movie. <laughs> He's been hanging out on this Sith planet that we've never heard of before. Exactly. Well, um, hooked no. up on some life support dialysis machine. Well, no, I, with I, a whole crowd of what Sith supporters. People. Yeah. <laughs> what What have they been doing this whole time, waiting for people to show? Up? I believe Exegol does exist in other stuff, but I mean, how are what we supposed to know? What have they been doing this whole time? Just sitting in that audience. <laughs> Watching Palpatine, dude. I don't know, man. It's it doesn't. It, a Is lot he of been it, working on new material for, <laughs> in front of the crowd. And so a lot of people have been complaining about different things. And the one thing I did think that was funny was is the. People are like, why is she calling herself Skywalker? There's a meme out there that says, what's your name? She's like, Ray. And she's like, Ray Palpatine. And she's shocking that lady that asked her with the Force Lightning. It was it was one of the worst setups I've ever heard for what was supposed to be such a big moment. 
it was it was so it was such a stretch to have an old lady. When everyone's like, go, "Oh, so you're you're gonna bury Leia's lightsaber somewhere she's never been?" Yeah, I've heard that too. But why would this old lady come by and wait? How does she word it too? It says something crazy like "last names only, please." <laughs> like, well, no, she, she said crazy. she said what's your name, and she's like Ray, and they goes, "You don't have a surname or something like that." And I'm like, well, she could have said anything. No, I don't. You know what I mean? It's it, it, it was pretty bad. Um, I, I mean, speaking of the the force ghosts or all the jedi are talking to her and this takes me back to we did an episode where i tried to not defend jar jar binks but i think if you're going to accept all the other crazy stuff in this universe you have to accept him and (laughs) this is one of the points where i actually laughed aloud in the theater (laughs) and i was the only one apparently because people looked at me weird is when um she's having this big uh, emotional moment, and she's hearing all the voices of these past Jedi going, Ray, Ray, we're with you, Ray, use the Force, Ray, we're here, Ray, alone you are not! And <laughs> out of nowhere, he comes in. And the other one, that they gave Chewbacca a medal. I laughed. And I yeah. think I think the person next to me got mad in the theater because I was laughing. No one wanted this. No one asked for this. This is one of those things that came from way back, right in the first movie. And every all these Star Wars fans joke about it. Oh, how come Chewie didn't get a medal? Right, right. It's been a long running joke well, for and, years. And no one actually wanted him. No one really cared. It's funny that he didn't get a medal. No one really shed a tear. Thinking, oh, Chewbacca finally gets his medal. The, the only part for me that made me sad, why I said, was when, when Chewie cries over Princess Leia dying. That one was a real legitimately sad moment because it's, I mean, it's the end of that. But then also Snap Wexley dying, like I said. Snap Wexley was like the dude for everything, Mr. Gung-Ho. And I'm just like, this is really, really how it's going to end. And I think, too, they screwed up. Ba- Babu Frick, uh, little dude, stole the show. <laughs> stole the show. He's freaking hilarious. Especially, and I then, like that he pops up in someone's shit, but he's not strapped into anything. Yeah, he it was, just pops up and goes, "Hey, it was the chick that helped them out." <laughs> so what happens when she's flying he's around? Like, he's hey. he just is he just like flying around the cockpit and for, hitting his head for all you for all the nerds out there. The voice of uh, Babu Frick is Moaning Myrtle from the Harry Potter movies. So, that's pretty... pretty. I thought that was pretty awesome. I think my favorite character is... Uh, <laughs> Kylo Ren is getting his helmet repaired, and there's like a chimpanzee <laughs> welding his helmet back together. Dude, so that's, Why? That's the, what's the point? That's the biggest one I've heard. People are like, what's up with the chimpanzee? It's, it's, what, what is it's this? It's not like a crazy Star Wars character. It's like a regular chimpanzee. Does he only have one eye, though? I don't know. All, That's even funnier All, I, for all I know is that was the biggest one people said was in the very end of The Last Jedi, he broke his helmet because Snoke was talking about him, about how you hide behind that mask like a little child. And it doesn't make much sense why he put it back together. He bought it back. And then the one cool thing I will say, so um, I learned this from Con Con's Cantina and also from um, Binge Mode Podcast. Do you know, the, so the, the Knights of Ren do not follow Kylo Ren. So then the comics, I guess there's a main guy who starts this group, the Knights of Ren, and his name is Ren. And you follow, you, you respond to the Force. They're all Force-sensitive, for the, and they're all basically dark, dark side, you would say. And that's why they attack Kylo Ren, is because they're all dark side. They go by the dark side. They don't care who the supposed leader is. They just follow, they follow the Ren, is what they call it. So I did like knowing the backstory about them before I went to go see it because it did make make the more sense because you're kind of like why would the dudes that were his buddies go after him <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. thing that makes sense. Um, there was a lot of stuff that like people said you can't call it fan service. It was like you just you, said Chewie uh, getting that medal was fan <laughs> that service. That was nothing 100%. but fan service. That really was. Yes. Uh, you know we talked about all the the reshoots that happened late late in the stages right. of, the, of the production. Uh, I, I, I wish they would 
they would somehow put out the original version. I would love to know what it was. Somebody uh, that Do- that Dominic Monaghan said, if you you guys need to see the JJ cut, I would love to know what it, it was before they listen to the Star Wars fans who think that they have input on it. Well, you know what happened was probably the people that complained about Sonic were like, "Hey, look, they saw that," and they're like, "Hey, we can do the same thing." That one was a good choice. Which <laughs> it was. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing. So, rumor is the Zack Snyder cut is done. Of Batman v Superman, and how long did it take us to get that? It's been what, four years, five years? What so the, of a new one? When when did Batman v Superman come out? Oh, f- fifteen or sixteen? Sixteen. Okay. okay. Sixteen. So it's four years, and Zack Snyder apparently just finished the Snyder cut. <laughs> the Snyder cut. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna. It might come out. I don't know. We'll see. Are you supposed to be releasing the? His visionary, from visionary director Zack Snyder. I don't know. His visionary version. Has he done anything since that? He must have. He went through a lot. I think it was his son committed suicide or something. Oh, that's why he, he left the movie. Some time off that's then. why he left the movie was because I think well, it was his son. Well, maybe that's why he's taken four years. Give the guy a break. No, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know if he's done anything yeah. else since then. And, you know, um, sp- side note, uh, uh, Henry Cavill uh, killing it on The Witcher. Um I actually... God, it's slow. I heard you got to get past the first couple episodes. I'm on episode six, and it picks up quite a bit there. We'll talk off air oh, about six stuff. episodes. Ugh. No, no, no. It picks what up after like this, Game of Thrones. It picks up after like <laughs> four. Right? <laughs> it picks up after like four, but six is where I really was like, oh, dude. And then I finished watching. I finished binge watching you season two, and I this was this is the crazy part for everyone out there. YouTube, Twitch. I knew how you season, season two ended because I read the spoilers and I was still shocked at the ending. That's how crazy the ending is. That I knew the ending and it still shocked me the way I saw it on screen. It was insane. I was like, how are they doing this? And then the guy was thinking his name, Ped, Penn Bagley, whatever his name is, the lead guy that plays Joe on there. Apparently he leaked already. Oops, so season three is in the works. <laughs> so he wasn't supposed to say nothing. You know, everyone's know. laughing at him because that um, the girl from Jane the Virgin. There's some show where you interview um, famous people, so famous people interview famous people, and she's like, "Oh, you know, when I was watching Gossip Girls, he's like, um, uh, it's a Gossip Girl," and corrected her, and they're like, "Oh my God!" They go, "This is the only time that you can let someone mansplain or something like that." They were saying he, because she said some racist stuff. I guess she used the N word or something like that, oh. so people aren't happy with her, but. Um, you season two was fantastic. So now all I have to catch up on is Clone Wars and Jack Ryan, which I'm really liking the Jack Ryan season on, on, um, Amazon. Amazon's fantastic. Finished watching the boys a while back. That one was, uh, um, the wife could not watch it because literally <laughs> she would walk in like, so mind you, um, I wanted my wife to get into game of Thrones and my wife cannot, like, she flat out told me, whenever we watch a show, she goes, I swear, if a horse dies right now, I'm going to be so mad. I'm not going to watch a show ever again. So guess what episode she starts watching on Game of Thrones? First season. When they kill the the, the wolf? Yes. The, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, when Ned has to kill the dire wolf. And I was like, oh, my God. And she's like... Why would you make me watch this? And she's crying, and I'm like, I for- forgot I hadn't watched the first season in so long. It was we were I was catching up for the last season, and I was like, oh man, this is not going to end well. And then sure enough, another new show that I really like, uh, Deputy, just premiered on Fox. Hulu got an early premiere for it. Um, it's actually super funny. Uh, basically, it's we're sidetracking now, but it's um a guy is a sheriff. And they um, are mad at him because he keeps calling off ice raids. He's like, I'm not going to be grabbing people. We're supposed to protect them. He goes, if you told me this guy was a gangbanger or a drug dealer, I'd go get him. But you're not going to do this. He goes, if you have a problem, and he says the sheriff's name, he can come find me. Well, it turns out this dude's on the, he's the mounted posse. So he's taking care of a horse and he hears a call. And he's like, oh, so he takes off in his truck. He goes after, gets these dudes, jacks them all up. When he goes down to the scene, it's it just it's bad. There's a dead body, a bunch of bad stuff happened. Well, the the sheriffs that were questioning him show up. And he goes, he goes, I'm not doing this right now. You guys, you guys want to complain? And then he's getting mad at them. They go, no. So the sheriff so and so had a, a a heart attack and he died. And apparently, according to his content his contingency plan, um, the highest, uh, the longest tenured sheriff on his mounted posse 
becomes acting sheriff. So this dude's acting sheriff, and he's just jacking stuff up, doing crazy stuff. It's really, really good. Um, I really, really liked it. What was it called? Deputy. Deputy? Deputy. Deputy, okay. Deputy, yeah. Really, really good. There's a couple of Foxes doing this weird thing where they're releasing like one episode now. I think they all premiere next week or the week after. So they're doing like a, we're going to drop these episodes and try and get you on it. Um, my mom won't watch the uh, that one where they're tracking demons or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. It's got the guy from Luke Cage in it. Um, my mom's dead. She's, she's super Catholic, so she's like afraid of it. But it's like they, they go to churches and they, they debunk. They're kind of like um, how uh, Scully was on X-Files. Like there's an explanation for everything. The same setup. One's like that. One's about beliefs and supernatural. So that's another one. I can't remember the name of it, but it looked really good. And then um, oh, what's the other one? I'm getting kind of tired of the FBI shows, though. Because they have that one on CBS. And then another network is going one that's called FBI the Agency or something like that because they already have an FBI. And I was like, really? You guys are going to do this now? I go, come on. It's it, if Everything feels so oversaturated now with shows. And for those of you that missed out on the Friends boat, you have to go get HBO Max now. But remember, one more year of The Office and it's gone off of Netflix too. So um, I don't know what they're going to happen with the NBC network. If they're going to make it free or not, but it's going there. I know they're working on shows, and then the, I'm kind of sad because uh, Greg Daniels has said that he wants to do reboot The Office, and I was like, "Uh, oh, what do you have to lose?" Um, I mean, you really you don't, don't watch it if it's not you good. Don't, right? You don't. You really don't have anything to lose. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff. It was crazy. This is the first year that I haven't seen a lot of new shows, though. Because usually what they do is they have like a mid-season replacement. So you'll see a couple new shows replacing ones that were bad or whatever. And I haven't seen too many of those pop up. I'm on Hulu, so that's a little bit different. But, I mean, have you seen anything? Nope. No. Man, everything feels so far away with... They get they got everyone pumped up about uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. That's not until next it's, year. It's like... No, I think it's even further away. Oh, maybe 2022. Yeah. And, and they still uh, have the Mandalorian's not out until fall. And then they also have the um, uh, what's his name and K two S O. That one's supposed to come out too. The the boys Caspian Caspian. The boys is already the June. boys. It's June. I think it came out June last year. It'll be June again because they were year. already June or July. They already finished filming before the, this year started. They were they were done filming like in November. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be June or July. Trying to think Which what is else when the is. first season came out. Yeah. So that one, I like that one. That was a fun... The Boys was a really fun show. James Cameron needs to hurry up with Avatar. Apparently, two, they, they, have it dialed, they have it dialed in. We, we, we spent <sighs> how long texting about that one? Because we were sending screenshots of all the, all the movies to six. I think six or nine. I can't remember. It's something crazy. It's something James Cameron over the top. <laughs> he wants to take them all, everyone down to Mordor and have them do like Lord of the Rings style and record everything in one shot. They need to hurry up with all these shows and movies. Don't they know climate change is coming? <laughs> we don't have time for. I don't to know, be man. Waiting. I mean, so we got we got WandaVision. Uh, we got the Winter Soldier and Falcon show, which I'm having. I have a feeling now. With the Black Widow movie coming out, having it being set take place right after um, Civil War, I have a feeling the Falcon and Winter Soldier shows gonna take place in a different time, because One Division takes place in the fifties or something like that. So I have a feeling it's gonna be something, because obviously, uh, excuse me, uh, Falcon is the new. Captain America, so yeah. he, he can't. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen with that. We got the Batman, the Batman, which has a stellar cast. Um, I'm trying to think what else comes out. We got episode 100. Do episode we have any 100 of the FOMO what, cast. Uh, what people want us to do? Nothing what we yet. Do? No, I'll put it in the notes of this one on YouTube to see what people think about. Yeah, and, but let us know if you do have any suggestions. Uh, I'm still working on the vocal stuff. It sounds a lot better on uh, the playback. We, 
I figured my equipment's not keeping up with me or something like that. I don't know. But uh, make sure you go to all of our stuff, uh, facebook.com slash FOMOcast, Twitter, FOMO underscore cast, FOMO podcast, on Instagram. Go to our Twitch, go to our YouTube, uh, leave comments there, leave recommendations. Uh, thank you, Tim, for listening. Uh, text me when you get this so I know you listened and tell me what day <laughs> we're going to the Tulare Farm Show because I need to ask for off for work. Um, uh, Titus, we miss you. We know you don't listen to this podcast at all. <laughs> so uh, uh, all Titus' friends, whenever you see him, just walk up and just touch his nose and go, boop. That's what you need to do. And you that's see Titus, say punch him. just walk up to his nose and just go, boop. Not right now, though, because he's sick. No, yeah, yeah when, he's, just, when he's healthy you don't again. Get when he's healthy that. again, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you all for listening. This is episode 99, so one more to the big 100. Uh, yeah, next one's going to be big. Uh, so for the FOMOcast, I'm Chris. I'm Andrew. This is the way. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>